All right, to work with this plugin, you need to have a ChatGPT Plus subscription. You have to enable plugins and then you have to enable GPT-4, go to plugins and select here on this dropdown, the plugin store. Here in the search bar, we type a scraper and then we have to install a scraper. So here, scraper and then you have to install this plugin. So once you have this plugin here, you have to enable this plugin, you have to check in the box and then we can start scraping a website with this plugin. So there are many limitations this plugin has right now, but in this video, I'm gonna show you all the websites that I was able to scrape using this plugin. And the first website I'm gonna show you is YouTube. So here I have my YouTube website and as you can see here, are all the videos that I published so far on YouTube. And if I want to scrape the titles, the number of views and the date the video was published, I only have to type a prompt and specify all of this data that I want to scrape. So I have to copy the link and then specify what data I want to scrape. So here I go back to ChatGPT, I have the scraper plugin enabled and I have to type the following prompt. And here I have the prompt. And the prompt says, scrape the titles, views and date published from the videos listed in this website. And this is the website, uh, my, YouTube, my YouTube site. So here, if I press enter, a scraper is going to scrape all of this data and by default a scraper is going to extract the first items that are on the website so as you can see here for example a scraper is going to extract only the first 10 videos uh, that are listed in this website but we can ask a scraper to extract more items and i'm going to show you how to do this after scraping this website all right as you can see a scraper a script 20 items from this website. So the latest 20 videos that are on my YouTube channel. So we have here, for example, my latest video is GBT engineer, generate a full code base with one prompt. And we have the views and the date published. And here is the, the data that was extracted. So as you can see, we didn't specify how many items we wanted to extract, but by default, it extracted 20 items. Sometimes it does only 10 or 15, but you can also specify how many items you want. For example, here I can tell ChatGPT, can you scrape 10 more items from the YouTube website I provided before? And if I press enter, a scraper is going to extract 10 more items from this same page. All right, as you can see, now it's continuing the, the previous list. So it's scraping 10 more items. And well, we can see now that we have that analysis project with Python. This was published seven months ago. And well, in total, we have 30 items scraped from my YouTube channel. And now if you want to export all of this data into Excel or into a spreadsheet, you can ask ChatGPT to put all this data scraped into a table. And to do this, I'm gonna ask ChatGPT, can you put that 30 items scraped in a table? And with this, I'm gonna get all this data inside the table. So we're going to get four columns here. The first column is the number of the item. Then we have the title, then we have the views, and then we have the, uh, the date it was published. So as you can see, we have this data. And although we cannot export all this data into a CSV file, because I don't have the code interpreter plugin, maybe when this code interpreter plugin is available for everybody, I can easily export it into a CSV file. But right now, the best way to do this is putting the data into a table and then copying and pasting this data into a spreadsheet like Excel or Google Sheets. All right, now I have to stop the response because after the row number 26, it had some errors here in the row number 26. It didn't put that the data inside the the views and the published column. This is an error that shouldn't happen all the time. Actually, I did a test uh, before making this video and it didn't have this error. And well, this um, it after doing this, automatically it generated another table, but again, it produced the same error. But anyway, as you can see, at least the first 25 items were successfully included into this table. And now you can copy this and paste it into Excel and well, you have your data scraped. Now let's move on to the next example. So for the next example, we're gonna scrape this website, Business Insider. And as you can see, this one has a different format from YouTube and we're gonna extract the 
titles of the news. Then we're going to start the description and the date when the article was published. And as you can see here, um, we have many news listed in this website. And to do this, we're going to the to ChatGPT and well, here we're going to write the following prompt. So script the headline, date published and description from the articles listed in this website. And here we have the website businessinsider.com. And after we press enter, we're going to scrape all the data inside this website. All right. As you can see, for some reason, a scraper wasn't able to scrape the data inside this website, which is weird because before making this video, I did a test here. As you can see, I did a test with a scraper and it was able to scrape data from Business Insider. And I'm going to show you here the data that it was able to scrape. So here in this prompt, it was the same prompt I used before and it was able to scrape the data from Business Insider. For example, here I have Mark Zuckerberg's comeback is in full swing and is here, if I'm not wrong, is here, is this website. So we have the title, the description and the time it was published. So we have title, description and data public and date published. In this case, it wasn't able to scrape the date published, but the title and description was successfully scraped. And well, in my first attempt, it scraped the first five items, but then it was able to scrape 10 more items as you can see here. So as you can see, this plugin is able to scrape websites. It does a good job sometimes, sometimes it fails for some reason, but in general, if the website isn't against web scraping in the terms of service, and if the website doesn't load its data dynamically, you shouldn't have any problem scraping the website using this ChatGPT plugin. And to explain you what I mean by loading data dynamically, I'm going to attempt to scrape the data from my own website. So here's my website, thepycoach.com. And here, well, here I publish articles about AI and programming, data science, well, any kind of tech topics. And as you can see here, there are a list of articles. And if we scroll down, we see that there are are more articles, but those articles are only loaded if we scroll down. So this website needs a scrolling to load all the data. And this is what I mean by loading the data dynamically. If you need to click on a button or to scroll down to get more data, that means that the website loads its data dynamically. And well, you can still scrape data from this website. For example, if I go here to ChatGPT, I can actually scrape the data from this website but the problem is that we're not going to able to scrape all the data. So let's give it a try. So here's the prompt that I'm going to use. I script the headlines, they publish, publish in text. This is this, uh, this part of the item, as you can see here, publish in, and this is the name of the publication. So as you can see, we also want to extract this, this, uh, this part of the item. Then we have uh, also the description and well, we want to extract all this data from the articles listed on my website. So if I press enter, we're going to be able to extract the first items that are on my website. So probably the first five or six items, but we're not going to be able to extract all the items that are in this page because the items are loaded dynamically. And that's an issue that right now a scraper is not able to handle. All right, as you can see, we only scraped the first five items. And well, if I ask a scraper to do some scrolling to scrape more items, it's going to tell me that it's not able to do this. And well, that's some of the limitations this plugin has. Some other limitations, as I mentioned before, is that it doesn't scrape websites that are against web scraping in their terms of service. It also doesn't scrape websites that load data dynamically and it doesn't do clicks, scrolling or other stuff that you will do with tools like Selenium, for example. Other than that, this plugin is great for scraping simple websites and well, it can save you some minutes when you want to extract data from some websites.